Friends, family, we're going to begin the funeral service for Mr. Donald E. Ratner. If you have a cell phone, I'd ask you kindly to place it in the silent mode at this time or turn it completely off. I'd also like to welcome everyone live stream who is joining us today. Services will be conducted by Rabbi Douglas Zeldin. Ms. Morla David, Adonai Roi Loechsar, Binos Deshi Arbitseni, Ame Menuchos, Shinahaleni, Nafshi Shove Vian Cheni, Bemagle Tzedek Lamaan Shemo, Gam Ki Elach Beget Salmaves, Lo Irara, Ki Ata Imadi, Shivtecha, Mishantecha, Himenachamuni, Ta Aroch Lafana Shulcha, Neged Sorarai, Dishanta Vashem and Roshi, Kosi Revaya, Ach To Vachesed Yudufuni, Koyeme Chayai, our service begins with the recitation of the 23rd Psalm, which I just recited in Hebrew. If you'd like to join me in the translation on the inside cover of your folders is the 23rd Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The next psalm I'm going to recite is Psalm 121. Shila Malo Sesa Enai El Hari Me Ainya Voezri, Ezri Me Madunoyo Se Shemaim Varet, Sal Yitain Lamot Raglacha Yanum Shomrecha, Hine Lo Yanum Vloishan Shomer Israel, Adonai Shomrecha, Adonai Tzilcha Yad Yaminecha, Yoma Mashemesh Yakacha Vierech, Belayla Naishmarcha Mikora Yishmars Navshecha, Adonai Shmart Seischo Vuecha Miatav Yarolam. I will lift mine eyes unto the mountains. What is the source of my help? The source of my help is the Lord, creator of heaven and earth. He will not let you falter. Your guardian does not slumber. Surely the guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. He is at your right hand to protect you. The Lord your keeper gives shelter. The sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from all harm. The Lord will preserve your soul. He will guard your going and coming from this time forth and forevermore. Dear friends, we come together this morning If you're in Israel watching us, which I know many are, including Rabbi Carson, who I spoke to this week, Sherwin Pomerantz, others, it's afternoon, and we gather together to say goodbye and pay our final respects to our beloved Donald Ratner of blessed memory who's gone to his eternal home. We pray that God will remember all the worthy and righteous deeds that he performed in the land of the living and that his soul will be bound up in the bond of eternal life. I want to extend my most sincere and deep sympathy to the immediate family today and the extended family. To Irene, who shared 64 beautiful years of marriage. They were married on November 25th of 1956. And I was just looking at their beautiful ketubah this week. To the children, to Jeffrey and Mitchell, who I've known since I'm a little older than them, but we were kids. To the grandchildren, Alana, Samuel, Max, and Megan. And to the entire extended family, nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends, we pray that you will all find comfort in knowing that Donald is receiving the reward due to the faithful 
reunited with his late parents, Samuel and Fanny of blessed memory, late brother Marshall of blessed memory, late brother-in-law Joel of blessed memory, and all those who have gone before him. It's traditional that we speak some words about our loved ones when we say goodbye. We call this in Hebrew, hesped, in English, loosely, a eulogy. We do this for two reasons. Number one, maybe somebody didn't know some of the things that we're about to say about this wonderful man who many of us loved for over 50 years. Maybe some of us longer than that. 64 years. Right. And also because God is with us. And even though God knows everything, we want to bring some of those attributes to the forefront as he's about to be receiving the reward due to the faithful and is reunited with those who have gone before him whom he missed. Donald was with us in this world for 88 years, a short 88 years. He was born in New York City, moved to Chicago, and attended Lakeview High School. He got his degree in accounting and became a certified public accountant. He will always be remembered and his yard site will be observed on the 22nd day of the Hebrew month of Cheshvan. Cheshvan is known by tradition as Mar Cheshvan, like the word Marwar, bitter. The bitter month of Cheshvan, because after Tishrei, a month where we were forgiven for our sins when Yom Kippur was over and we're all still alive, past Yom Kippur to celebrate that, and then the most joyous holiday of Sukkot. Cheshvan comes and there's no holiday in it. And so we call it a little bit bitter. But we know on Yom Kippur, when God sealed his book, he chose the 22nd day of Cheshvan to make this month a little bit more bitter and take such a special person from us and though he's been ill recently, to me, growing up with him, he was larger than life. As he and my father were friends together on the board of directors for many years of Main Township Jewish Congregation, where Donald, of course, was past president as well. I saw Don all the time. I saw him in shul all the time. I saw him in the neighborhood all the time. And to me, he was always larger than life. Not only very tall when I was a young boy and always tall, but he had that deep voice. And he commanded a group when he was speaking when he was president of the shul, I can still picture him standing on the beam of making announcements and getting everybody's attention with that powerful voice he had. He was a very intelligent person and determined, very kind. He had this soft part of him and then again, this strong, tough part of him which meshed together beautifully. And those who knew him well know their personality. He was very efficient and talented at the things he did. He had strong values and scruples. His integrity never was bent. It was always solid and straight. And he kept to his values and his strong love of Israel, of Yiddishkeit Judaism, of public Jewish life, and wanting to be able to make a difference 
was always evident. He had so many friends. He was a founding partner at Radner Sandlow and Associates and later a partner with the accounting firm of Brooke Weiner. He was a longtime devoted board member and past president to the Board of Jewish Education. And when I was talking to Jeff this week, I told him uh, one of our uh, mutual friends who was involved in the Board of Jewish Education and also grew up in Des Plaines contacted me this week when he heard of Donald's passing and he said, you know what? That's when the Board of Jewish Education really cared about Jewish education in the community, when Donald was in charge. He was someone, if you met him, you will never forget him. And we pray that his name will always be remembered for a blessing. Amen. I'm going to ask some of the family members who have words to share their own hespade in memory of their grandfather and father to come forward now and if you'll give them your attention. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to thank you all for coming. For those who didn't know, I'm one of Don's grandchildren, Max. Though he had other names for me, like Punk, Maxi, and his favorite, The Professor. Similar similarly, Don had a lot of different names to the many people he touched in his life, like Mr. BJE, as he dedicated countless years of his life to fundraising in support of Jewish education. And over this past week, I've learned more than ever how loyal and universally helpful he was to everyone and anyone that asked. But one thing that I always knew was for sure with Grandpa Don was his relationship with his family. Family always came first. With his grandchildren, nothing was too much. Concerts, games, competitions, graduations, investments, <laughs> you name it, he was there. I always loved trying to teach him how to take a selfie after a show. Although he couldn't quite figure that out, um, he never missed a beat. With his sons, he was always on call. Still nothing was too much. Calling to help with accounting, to check in, and maybe even to help with spelling. Sorry, Dad, I guess it does skip a generation. And of course, with Grandma Irene, it was 24-7. 64 years is still unbelievable to me. I mean, that's three me's, and I already thought one me was enough. No matter who, family or friend, Grandpa Don would be there in a moment's notice. With a smile on his face, and a joke in his back pocket. He was the most reliable person I've ever met in my life. Although he may not be with us anymore, I will never forget what he taught me about family, life, and of course, tax form T1046. Your legacy lives through us. We love you, Grandpa, and you always be missed, but never forgotten. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate everyone being here today. Um, I am Jeffrey's son, um, also one of Papa Don's grandchildren. <clears throat> um, I'd like to preface um, everything that I kind of speak about on behalf of both my sister Alana and cousin Max and the rest of the family when um, we say we were incredibly fortunate to have Papa Don as our grandfather. I've learned a lot from my grandfather over the years and I've learned different things from him at different points in my life. And when I think of my grandfather, I, similarly to Max, I, th I tend to think of him in two core pillars, his family life and his work life. The family pillar, as Max mentioned, was also a simple one to my grandfather. It was non-negotiable. Growing up, as also Max said, Papa never missed a baseball game, a basketball game, a soccer match. He never missed Alana's horse competitions or a single palm routine. Any of Max's soccer games or any of his theatrical plays no, no matter how many nights in a row they have theatrical plays, he never missed one of them. To my grandfather, family was everything. 
his love and his engagement in all of his grandchildren's lives and both of his sons never wavered. It was a switch, not a dial, and Alana, Max, and I had had an overwhelmingly happy childhood, and my grandfather and my grandmother played an integral role in that. As I've gotten older, I started to comprehend that not only did he never miss a single family event, but he never missed a day of work. The word retirement was not in his dictionary. (laughs) When I was younger, I never even realized that that wasn't typical. I actually vividly remember the first time that I realized that most people do not work until their 80s when it was near, I think it was winter break in middle school, and all my friends were talking about how their grandparents would be coming over for Thanksgiving and Christmas out of the retirement home or the nursing home, and it would take them forever. It was this whole big project. And I was thinking to myself, my grandfather, in the dead of winter at 85 years old, was hopping off the L downtown to walk over Adam Street to file a tax return <laughs> for a 30-year-old client. That was the moment I realized how driven my grandfather was that his work, and his work ethic, worth ethic, worth work ethic was admirable, and his commitment to always doing the right thing stemmed even further. When starting my own company, I began to engage with some of my grandfather's clients, his colleagues, his coworkers, some of which Rick and others are here tonight. Um, um, you know, in an early stage startup, there are a lot of things that we don't have. Regulators would ask for audited financials, and we barely had unaudited financials. Um, and I would call my dad, I said, Dad, we're gonna need an accountant. He said, call Papa. Max interned at the company earlier this summer, helping with all of our regulatory filings and he was reading me line items one by one, what's your social, all these things. And one of them was, what's the exact IRS office that we filed last year's e-return at, and on which day would we file them? And then I heard Max pause and say to himself, who the hell would know something like that? I smiled, I said, call Papa, and we both laughed. My grandfather's attention for detail and his memory was impeccable, and I've certainly inherited my grandfather's work ethic. Although over the last quarter or two, it switched from when I'd call Papa to my grandfather saying, call Rich. (laughs) He was getting tired and was gradually spending less time in the office. And as he began working with some of my grandfather's colleagues, almost every call would start off with an 18 minute overview of every story that they had about my grandfather and how much of a great colleague he was and an even better man. Sometimes I would start to get annoyed because I really just needed the 10 second answer, otherwise Max was gonna flip out. But I learned to cherish those stories and those phone calls no matter how long they've lasted. Learning from someone how to balance those two opposite ends of life, the polar opposite pillars of family and work, is something I'm extremely grateful for. Throughout my entire life, my grandfather was someone who never wasted a day, never wasted a moment. He's taught me about family, about love, loyalty, and integrity. Through not his words, but his actions, he taught me that most of the decisions that'll be made about you in your life are made when you are not in the room, and so to be a good person. And for that, I'm very grateful. I'd like today to be a day of celebration, the celebration of an incredible man, husband, father, grandfather, friend. I've been telling both my dad and my uncle Mitch, and I know they agree that we have nothing to complain about. My grandfather lived an amazing life full of love for his wife and his kids and his grandchildren. Many friends of mine are not as fortunate to have had their grandfathers in their lives for as long as Alana, Max, and I have. The memories we have with my grandfather never leave and his impact never dissipates. So while today is still sad and there will certainly be tears, we should all strive to tell stories and share laughter as no one ever laughed harder than my grandfather. Thank you. I just want everyone to know that this is the first time that my father hasn't helped me write anything down for a public speaking. I want to thank everyone for coming and showing your respect for my family and my father during these hard times. And those who are watching from home, I thank you. Who was Don Ratner? My dad had lots of names. A few of them were Papa, Donald Duck, the Don, Mr. B.J the tax man, and even George Bailey. But I call him dad. One of my first memories of my dad was watching TV at night with the whole family. In his bedtime approach, he would tell me and Jeff, time for bed. As I pleaded with him to stay up a little later, he offered a piggyback ride for me and Jeff to get up the stairs. I remember the last time I got one of these rides. As we hit the top of the stairs, We almost fell backwards. 
as I laughed, he was gasping for air. As he dropped me on the bed, he said, you're getting too old for this. And I said, so are you. We both laughed, love and strength. A few years later, I remember dad coming into my bedroom as me and Jeff were playing. He said he had something he wanted to talk to us about, as he, <clears throat> and I was scared at first. As he sat us down in the bed, and he told us he was thinking he was running for president of the temple, and he wanted to know if we were okay with that. We both said, sure, respect. But the following weekend, as we finished our Friday night dinner, and I was going out to play, my mom said to me, time to change into something nice for Friday night services at the temple. I asked, why do I have to go to temple? She said, to support your dad. I thought to myself, I would never have agreed to this part if I knew that part of the deal. <laughs> as, we, <clears throat> as the night went on, as I watched my dad for 90 minutes up on the bima, addressing the congregation every Friday night for four years, I think, wow, fearless. Another time I remember was a time when I was horse playing around in front of the house with some of my friends. While playing, I was struck in the eye with a rock <coughs> by one of my friends and I was hospitalized for three days. A few weeks after I got home from the hospital, I was hanging out with the same friends. And one of them asked if my parents were going to sue my friend's parents. I didn't even know what that meant. <coughs> that night, I asked my dad if he was going to sue my friend's parents. He replied, no, it was an accident and I don't believe in suing, integrity. These are just a few <clears throat> of my childhood memories. Most people don't know that my dad spent half his life volunteering for nonprofit organizations, over 40 years with the BJE and four years with, as the president of his synagogue and many other organizations. Even his dad worked for the BJE. His whole life was to serve his community. He was a go-to man for everything. But most important, he was a go-to husband for my mom and a go-to dad for me and Jeff. When you look at his personality traits, love, strength, respect, fearless, fearlessness, integrity, and the service he gave to his community, what you have is a superhero. I will always love you and look up to you even after you're gone. I'll miss you for the rest of my life and I always will love you, my dad, the superhero. Those are good acts to follow. Thank you for saying all of those things. Thank you for everyone for being here from near and far and from those watching on television. In my dad's final days, for those of you who don't know, he lost the ability to speak. He could still answer yes and no. He could say yeah and no. But uh, we wanted to see him and we got fortunate enough in this crazy world in which we live, Mitch, my mom and I, to spend three hours with him about two weeks ago. And during that time, we had the ability to allow him to speak to us through some questions that we were able to ask and we were and he made it clear to us that his wish was to move on it was a quality of life decision it was a wish we had no choice but to grant and that we agreed with him sometimes it's not easy to grant a wish but we knew that it was what he wanted and so we did do that we laughed and we cried we talked for three hours and he could laugh, he understood us, he knew exactly what we were saying, but it was hard for him to talk back, but we understood from our questions to him 
what he wanted. We sent our wishes to all of, from all of you to him, from everybody watching and here today. And uh, it, was, it gave him great comfort, those t that, that time that we had with him. From the folks at the firm and the BJE, from friends from Displains, and every walk of life, it was comforting to him to know that you were thinking of him. And I told him, although you're in this room alone, you're not alone. Because the moment the three of us walk out, everybody is thinking of you all day, every day. As, as we were leaving, and this wasn't really planned or thought about, it just came to me that he has a friend in Israel. It just came to me. I, I, I didn't have this written down. It was not part of any agenda. And I said, Dad, and I looked him in the eye, I said, I held his hand, I said, do you want me to reach out to Sherwin Pomerantz in Israel? a friend of his for over 50 years, and to tell him what's going on. He said, yeah, yeah. I said, is it okay if I share some of the details of your fate? He said, yeah. I said, I will, I will email him tonight. So late that evening, I wrote a very difficult email. I clicked send and I went to sleep. I woke up to a, an email from Sherwin. I wept as I read it. I printed it out, folded it up, and went to the hospital. I got in the room and I said, Dad, do you remember yesterday you wanted me to reach out to Sherwin? He said, yeah. I said, he wrote back. He said, yeah. I read the email to my dad. I can tell you that it gave him great comfort to have this communication with a longtime friend. And it gave him great peace. Great peace. Seven years ago on November 3rd, a different November 3rd than this year, the BJE honored my dad for 40 years of service. We all gathered at a restaurant in Evanston. And it was dark if you could remember what a restaurant looks like today. And in walks a man, I, I, in the distance, I couldn't quite see who it was. He's walking closer, but I could see he had a big grin on his face. He got closer, he's walking with crutches in each hand. It was Sherman Pomerantz. He came from Israel to surprise my dad at this honor dinner. I couldn't believe it as he came closer. I go, Dad, Sherwin. He goes, oh my God. I said, no, it's his Sherwin. <laughs> he said, oh my God, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. This man on crutches flew halfway across the world to surprise my dad for a dinner. They cried, they hugged. They didn't get to speak a lot over the years or see each other because of the distance, but their bond was never broken and I, one of my emails back to Sherwin, I said, may all friendships be as, as, as genuine as this one. And I've got the pleasure to have some of those friendships and those folks are here today too. Sherwin asked if I would read something. I said, of course. So this is from Sherwin Pomerantz to my dad. If he were here today, this is what he would be speaking. To Irene, Jeff, Mitch, and the grandchildren, I cannot sufficiently express how profoundly sorry I was to hear of Don's passing this week. While the news earlier this month was certainly not encouraging, it remains inconceivable to me that Don is actually gone. So many times over the past years, when I would speak about Don to others, I would remark that I have this good friend in Chicago who's older but close in age to me, whose only medication is a half an aspirin a day. Given that, acknowledging his passing is simply difficult. Don was my friend. Actually, more than that, he was my good friend. Someone with whom I could share the most personal things because, he, because I knew he would not only understand, but that he would be there for me, always, in every way. We met in 1966 when our family moved to Niles and joined Maine Township Jewish Congregation. At the time, it was not yet called Shire Emmet, but it was not 
until a few years later when I actually challenged the slate of officers for the synagogue and became ritual vice president that we really started to connect. And in a very strange way, nobody among the leadership knew me that well, and Marty Levy, who was the president, asked Don, who was executive vice president at the time, to attend the first meeting of the ritual committee to frankly check me out and see what I was about. Little did anyone know at the time that we would become fast friends. But it was clear to me as soon as we met that Don was really smart, empathetic, caring, and with a level of personal dignity and honesty that was part and parcel of his persona. From that day forward, our lives were inexorably intertwined. From our mutual activities at MTJC, in the United Synagogue of America, and ultimately the Board of Jewish Education, our goals and objectives were always in sync with each other. Don had high standards and not only expected others to live up to those standards, but he empowered people to meet those standards as well. Over the years, we laughed together, celebrated smachot, and together, during the sad times, and there were plenty of those as well, we cried together. His was a shoulder I could lean on, and that shoulder was there whenever I needed it. 32 years ago, during a personal life challenge, I needed a friend more than ever. Don gave up a month of his personal and professional life to deal with issues that I was simply not able to address. And for that, I am and will always be grateful. It is not often in life that one finds such a friend. I was lucky enough to find Don, and my life has been enriched for knowing him and loving him. His loss creates yet another void, not only in the hearts of his family, but in my life as well. And that void will not be filled. Nevertheless, I am grateful every day that I had the privilege of calling him friend and for having received the amazing benefits of that relationship. May he rest in peace in the loving arms of the Almighty, and may his memory be for a blessing. I will miss him dearly. Yechai Zechro Baruch. Thank you, Sherwin. It means a lot to me and my family, and I can tell you from all the miles apart, you put a smile on my dad's face in his final days. This is a poem I wrote for my dad, Don Ratner. Generous to a fault, a man of great honor, straight as an arrow that few can truly follow. A great role model you were, you taught me a lot how to love and help others, and how to tie in neckties, perfect knot. To the army you went and met mom at a dance. You fell right away. You fell right away, so began your romance. Each week you brought flowers to show her your love. Your nicknames and squeezes set it all high above. My joys were yours, my sorrows were too. A true partner you were, this is so very true. Your legacy lives on in your grandchildren too. In Sam, Max, and Alana, your sweet, precious few. They called you their papa and they fixed your cell phone. They will never forget you as you now journey home. From Betty and Joel, and from Harriet and Rock, from Elaine, Mel, and Jerry, the laughs never stopped. With Butch and Rochelle, and of course, Marilyn and Kurt, you didn't have to be blood to be in my dad's family book. A confidant for clients and friends whom you worked tirelessly in tatters and in their final days entrusted you with their financial matters. A half century devoted to Jewish causes with little spare time from the BJE and our temple with never a whine. So my hero and partner, this comes from the heart. I give you this poem just as you depart. 
So rest, my dear father. For the first time in years, I know that your legacy lives on in our tears. I love you, Dad. I miss you already. Amazing words from everyone. It's, uh, your poem reminds me of a, what a little shtetl we all grew up in because I knew everyone's name that you mentioned. <sighs> of all your parents' friends. And many of whom are here today, people I grew up with and care about and have cared about for years, for most of my life. This week in the Torah, we read the Torah portion of Chaye Sarah. In the book of Genesis, as we are, Simcha Torah. And when Sarah, our matriarch, dies at the beginning of this portion at a ripe old age, after Abraham cries a little bit and eulogizes a little bit, the first thing he does is go to perform the act of kindness, a mitzvah that he must do. And he comes to the Hittites, Ephron Achiti, their leader, and says, I need to buy a burial place for my wife who died. And Ephron says, you're an important person, a wealthy man. You don't have to pay for anything. I'll give it to you as a gift, any place you want. And Abraham refuses. He says, no, I want to buy a burial place. And so Ephron takes advantage of him and says, okay, what's Arba Meot Shekel Kesef? The amount of money he asked for between us. And Abraham paid this exorbitant amount of silver coins and bought the cave of Machpelah. And he himself buried Sarah. And we learn from this that this act of kindness and this mitzvah that we're going to do today is something that everybody participates in rather than hiring other people to do it for us, just like Abraham did this act of kindness for Sarah. The ceremony called Chesed Shal Emet, truth and kindness. Why? Because any other act of kindness we do for someone, whether it's giving charity, feeding the hungry, Whatever that act of kindness is, the person that we do it for can always want to say thank you or repay us. This act of kindness we are about to perform today, just like Abraham, to eulogize and do this act of kindness and mitzvah, is considered to be the greatest act of kindness that one can do for another because we can never hear the words thank you and never be repaid. But we know that Dinah's looking down, thanking his family for this dignified, goodbye, proper Jewish service and mitzvah and act of kindness that we are performing today because you have seen fit to do this on his behalf and fulfill his wishes. One of the things I wanted to share, and, and this is probably what touches me the most with anyone that I grew up with. I was this kid growing up in shul, in the synagogue. And I was there all the time, in everybody's face, in the way, participating in services and at social events that my parents were part of running with Donald and Irene and others who've been mentioned. And then when I grow up and some like someone like Donald Ratner calls me on the phone and says, Rabbi Doug, I need to talk to you about something. And I was telling Jeff about this this week. And he asks me to meet him because he wants 
to talk to me about some rabbinic things and Jewish things. That's where it gets to you. When you say, oh, he doesn't look at me only as a kid anymore, <laughs> right? And that's what made me choose what I'm going to read right now as is traditional to read something from the Bible. As I mentioned, a little over a month ago, we celebrated the holiday of Sukkot, Shemini Atzeret and Simchat Torah. And during that festival, we always read the book of Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, written by King Solomon according to tradition in its entirety. This year, because there was no Shabbat Chol Amoid, we read it on Shemini Atzeret on the eighth day of the holiday. And these famous words most appropriate for today come from Kohelet Ecclesiastes. <laughs> There's a season for everything, a time for every experience under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to grieve, and a time to dance, a time to throw stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace others, and a time to be alone, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to discard, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to speak, and a time for silence. And let us all spend just a few moments in silent tribute and prayer to our beloved Donald. And so, dear God, family and friends gather here in person and online, all to express our undying attachment to, now, to Donald E. Ratner of blessed memory. Family and friends gather remembering now the moments shared in the times of celebration as well as the times of difficulty but especially the times of warmth, closeness, love, and companionship. We pray, O oh God, that you will treasure all that was good in his life and that you'll help all of us to retain that good as part of the very fabric of our lives. And let us all say, Amen. Though he's gone physically, you, his family especially, have the opportunity to grant Donald Ratner eternal life. And how do you do this? First of all, you keep his pictures close by, remember that smile on his face. And as I mentioned, you remember that distinct sound of his voice. But most importantly, and I think that all of you who spoke today reiterated the same thing. You take those values, those traditions that your parents raised you with, and you raise your children with them, and they live by them, Lador Vador, from generation to generation. And he will live on within each of the grandchildren. And we pray one day a namesake will be born to carry on the good name of Yehuda ben Shabsai. Alava Shalom. And he will live on within each of you. And in closing here in the chapel, I haven't recited this for a long time, one of my favorite poems, but some of my friends who are here today have heard me say it in the past because we've been together for years and years and years. And I think most appropriate for today, this is called The Dash. I read of a rabbi who stood in the cemetery at the memorial service of a friend. He noted the dates on the headstone, the date at the beginning and the date at the end. He spoke first of the date of birth and of the second date he spoke of with some tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash inscribed between those years, for that dash represents all the time he spent here on earth. And those who knew him and loved him are the only ones that know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash, 
What matters is how we live and how we love and how we spend our dash. So think about it long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For we never know how much time we have left. We could all be past dash, mid-range. If we could just slow down to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way that other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we just treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, always remembering that our special dash only lasts a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about you and how you spent your dash? His dash was so full. Unbelievable the things he accomplished. Please stand for the memorial prayer. El Malay Rachamim Shochain Bam Romim Hamadse Minucha Nachona Kanfe Ashrina Bemalos Gedoshi Mutorim Gizorakia Masirim Es Nishmas Yehuda Ben Shabsai Shahalach Leolamo Bavor Shamis Balim Bad Haskaras Nishmaso Began Eden Tab Nuchaso Anabal harachamim hasti reu bisets knafecha leolamim utzor bitzor achaim es nishmaso Adonai hu nachlaso v'yanuach b'shalom amishkavo v'nomar Amen. O God, exalted and full of compassion, grant perfect peace in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure to the soul of Yehuda ben Shabsai, Allah v'shalom. Donald E. Ratner of blessed memory, who has gone to his eternal home. O Master of mercy, beseech you to remember all the worthy and righteous deeds that he performed in the land of the living. May his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. For you, Hashem, are his portion. May he rest in peace. May his name and his legacy always be remembered for a blessing. And let us all say, Amen. Please be seated right now. If you'll give Peggy her, your attention, she's going to give us instructions to line up and continue the service at the graveside. This does conclude the service at the chapel. For the people who that are here, the procession will be forming in the parking lot. Please keep in mind a few safety features while in the procession. Keep your bright headlights on at all times. Put your emergency blinkers on. Attach the orange funeral sticker to the passenger portion of your front windshield. And we will attach a flag to the roof of your car and please stay as close as safety permits to the car in front of you. The family will be sitting Shiva at the Ratner residence uh, today, Thursday, November 12th from 2 until 8. And then again Sunday, November 15th, again 2 until 8. Socially distanced space uh, will be provided both indoor and outdoor, and there will be heat lamps outside as well. The following people have been selected to serve as pallbearers. When I call your name, if you'd like to step forward. Craig Rosenstein, Joy Rosenstein, Alana Ratner, Sam Ratner, Max Ratner, Megan Hayes, and Jamie Gould. At this time, I would ask that everyone please rise as the family, the rabbi, and Mr. Ratner are escorted from the chapel.